Over the years, I've tried a lot of different methods to make shingles and siding from pallet wood. The method that I'm gonna show in this video is all about saving time. So I'm not going to carefully pry the pallets apart. I'm not going to use a sawzall to cut down the sides to cut all the nails. No, this is all about saving time. <sighs> Now it's not that prying apart a pallet or carefully disassembling it with uh, crowbars or with a sawzall, like that those methods are wrong. It's just that when you need to make hundreds and hundreds of shingles or pieces of siding, it's about time. And so this method is a method that took me years to finally settle on. And I feel like I wasted a lot of time disassembling pallets versus this method. At this stage, the main thing that I'm thinking about is the length of the shingle. And usually the distance in between the structural pieces is around 16 inches. I'm usually making shingles between 12 and 14 inches long. And so as long as what I'm cutting is longer than 12 or 14 inches uh, for me, then I'm great. And I can do all of this by only making six cuts on a normal size pallet. This is a longer pallet, so I'll need to make an additional cut on each side. Uh, so that is, for this pallet, it's four cuts, or on a regular pallet, six cuts. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting along one side of the structural piece. I'm not cutting both sides. Because then what I can do, once I've cut one side, is I can just peel it up and pry it off. And it goes much faster that way. I like to use a circular saw with a demolition blade, of course, and because uh, it's going to get destroyed and it needs to be a saw designed to, you know, occasionally interact with a nail or a, a random knot. And obviously you're gonna need eye protection and uh, hearing protection. I like something that has Bluetooth so that I can listen to music while I'm doing this. Now the disposal of the structural pieces is going to vary from region to region. Uh, some states allow you to have burn barrels. Uh, I have a wood burning stove and this is just heat treated uh, pallet wood so this is also safe to burn in my uh, wood stove but you can also if you have a fire pit or if you want to go through the process of pulling all the nails out you can also use the wood. Now it's super important that I mention to you that you can only use safe pallet wood for this kind of a project because there are some pallets that are treated with what's called methyl bromide and they'll be stamped with an MB designating that they have that hazardous chemical in the wood. Uh, so you should not use them. They're hazardous to cut, they're hazardous to breathe the sawdust, to handle, all that kind of stuff. Um, the ones that uh, you'll generally see, say, HT, which means heat treated, uh, which is exactly that. They were just heated to kill the bugs or any uh, funguses or mold or anything that's in the wood, and they're safe to use, however. Um, there's also some that are marked as debarked. Uh, there's a couple other safe designations like that. But if the wood has been painted, you also never want to use a palette that's been painted because a lot of times it's been painted because it has methyl bromide and they're painting it so that they don't have to come in contact with the chemical. So these are things you have to really think about, uh, especially if you end up burning this wood, uh, the leftover pieces like in your fire pit or in your wood stove or anything like that. You do not want to be burning methyl bromide anywhere where people can breathe it. Well, you just don't want to burn it at all. It's bad stuff. Now at this point, I cut the shingles to length. I have one that's cut to the exact length. I measured it all out and it's the correct length, in this case, 12 inches. And then I have a block clamped down so that I have a jig so that all I have to do is slide up and meet this block every time. And then I can reproduce 
many shingles very quickly. So the first thing I do is I square the end. And then I cut it to length. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I always try to make sure that I cut knots out of the shingle, and so this is a good example. Um, I want to cut it so that I don't have a little bit of a, of a knot in the shingle so that it doesn't twist in the future. Amazing. So for all three people that made it this far in the video, do you want to know more? Like how to do the shingles and how to do the siding? Uh, if so, leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, you might like these.